May 16, 2019, you're listening to the That's What G Said podcast. Right now, before you do anything else, stop. Make sure to go over to iTunes, subscribe, and then just punch that little five-star rating. If you have an extra second, maybe leave a little comment, but you can just uh, punch that five-star rating, subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll get every episode of That's What G Said sent to you automatically, even the late-night ones like this Preakness special and uh, those five star ratings really help me out a ton. Always got to give a shout out to Joey Cleveland. Joey, nice job. That is the man who sings the theme song there. A very good friend of mine. Just going to be a little quick intro this week because the focus this week, this episode, you've heard me three times this week. And if you listen to the Mike Abadir show, the other podcast with uh, my good friend Mike Abadir, where we co host the show every Thursday, you heard me a little earlier on today. So. Another another podcast. Really, that's like four shows in three days. That's a lot. That's a lot of Gino. So I'll give you a few days off after this. But hopefully, the Pimlico Friday and the Saturday Pimlico cards uh, analysis will really help you out. I always try to do my best and and spend a lot of time digging into those cards. So really hope to uh, steer you in the right direction as far as the uh, the wagering is concerned. Quick little look at May sixteenth. On this day, what happened? 1920, Joan of Arc was canonized a saint. In uh, 2013, human stem cells were successfully cloned. How about 1946, Annie Get Your Gun musical? Dorothy by Irving Berlin, Dorothy and Abra Fields opens at Imperial Theater New York starring Ethel Merman and featuring There's No Business Like Show Business. And I'm pretty sure that one of the next lines in the song is, let's go on with the show. That's probably what many of you are thinking every time I go off on a little singing tangent on one of these episodes. But I'm sorry. There are going to be many of them. I just can't help it many times. Let's see. May 16th in sports. It's 1948. First chess world champion. Chip since World War II Russian player Mikhail Botvinnik wins a five-player tournament to begin a begin 20-year Russian domination uh, let's see. First optical laser was operated in Malibu, California, 1960. And the U.S. Senate failed to impeach President Andrew, jo- uh, Andrew Johnson by one vote May 16th, 1868. So let's move along. Always got to get you a little, uh, on this day. Preakness tweets. Facebook messages. A lot of people, when I posted the uh, the morning line for the Preakness, post their thoughts. So I wanted to give everyone a little shout out, give you a, a moment, let everyone know who you liked. And if they win, we'll all know. It'll be in history forever. You can say, hey, look, I called my shot because I'm recording this on May 16th. It is it's before midnight out here in Southern California. So you called your shot at least a few days early because I've actually posted this and on Wednesday, Bill Gilbert, Bourbon's, Bourbon Wars line is too high, 12 to 1. I agree with you. I think he should be more around like 8 to 1 or so. I don't want anything less than 6. Kristen Andrews says, War of One in the darn one hole again. Yeah, right? War of Will with a big shot. Yeah, he's going to be down in the one hole again, though. We'll see if he can he can uh, hopefully stay out of some trouble this time. Thomas Lee Walters Jr. He said the seven is winning this time, but the number will not be DQ. That's always mining. Good luck, Thomas Lee Walters Jr. Gary Williams, the same thing. War of Will on the rail again. He needs to send this time. We'll go over that race in just a little bit. Chad Ewing, same thing. War of Will. Bad luck in, in draws. Um, uh, Velarde says always mining will be half the price. At, uh, he says he thinks will be half the price, kind of same as War of Will. So he thinks always mining is going to get bet down. Maybe it'll four four to one or so. Signal minute thirty to one is juicy, even though I think he's better suited for the Belmont with that pedigree. That is Dave Foster. Okay, Dave. Uh, Dennis Irwin says four one ice cold. So he likes improbable war of will, and uh, he says take it easy, Dave Weaver. I was just recently texting Dave Weaver, who's out at Pimlico. Give Dave a watch over on uh, TVG this weekend. Robert Gross four all the way improbable. Okay. Uh, Jim Milski, another twist of fate is the pick of the year for Jim. Good luck, Jim. We hear from Craig. He says, uh, how about Ondale Brad Cox, one of the hottest trainers right now. That is Craig Shore. 
Craig, good luck. He talks about Owen Dale, but you also have a Warriors charge for Brad Cox, right? So if you're just playing the Brad Cox angle, you have a couple of opportunities there. And Charles Stone said he thinks uh, Owen Dale was the one. He's primed. So he saw an interview. Scott Macias, the signal man. Go get him, big fella. Shout out to Brian Everett. He said the outcome of the Derby kind of jacked the Preakness. I don't know if the outcome of the Derby, it just, we'd like to have seen the horses run back, right? I think the fact that Maximum Security and Country House aren't running back probably would have been nice to see. I don't think it hurts this the race, though. The race is actually pretty wide open, especially if you don't like Improbable on top. There, there are, um, you know, many horses to make. I think the new, some of the new shooters, you can make cases for plenty of them. They're like four. It's a really hard race to, for me to handicap. I thought there were like four horses that I had just had real major question marks about. I don't know how they're going to fit in. So I, I sort of disagree. I think the fact that we've been talking about the, the DQ, we've been talking about the Derby all throughout the last couple of weeks and, and not just who won the Derby, but everything that happened there and in War of Will, it'll be really interesting what happens with the War of Will, right? Is if, if War of Will wins this race, then we go, you know, everyone can build the case that, hey, look, maybe War of Will without some trouble has a big shot in the, uh, in the Derby. Maybe the DQ really was warranted, but, you know, so we'll, we'll see. It'll, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll be up for debate even more, I think, if War of Will is able to win this race. Charles Stone said, Bodie, uh, Bodie Express for the win play show, money to be made. Uh, nice to hear from Charles Stone posting some comments on here. Michael Vasluzo. Great to hear from Michael. We'll be sending out the uh, the Preakness stuff, Mike. Hope you have a nice one. Uh, let's see. Casey Corrigan. Lisey McLean checked in. Thomas McKeon. Kim Carlson also checks in. Seems like she uh, likes another twist of fate. She said she was in awe of the stride in the El Camino Real Derby. Bill is rooting for War of Will. And then a big shout out to Chad Ewing, who likes the the idea of jockeys maybe wearing body cams. They have some of the helmet cams if you if you've seen them, they're pretty cool. They don't. Um, I, I've seen them in the morning workouts and maybe here or there. I don't know how often they're used. To be honest, though, I'm not quite sure. But I, I've seen those those type of things used before. Just don't don't see them all too much. Anytime you see a tw- um, a post on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, always. Want to hear from you with your thoughts. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you disagree? Opinions, especially if it's in horse racing. Give us a a pick in the race or how do you see the race unfolding? Always love talking racing with the the folks out there. So appreciate you tuning in. It's time to get to that Saturday Pimlico card. So we'll we'll go races 3 through 13. And I think there are two races where I'm kind of going to skip over. I'll tell you why when we get to those races, mainly because they're not in the middle of exotic wagers that I want to be playing. And you got to really pick and choose your spots. If you don't love the race, just just pass it, move on, right? So many opportunities. Don't force yourself. You you know you can you can get value. You can find value all over the place when you wait. Sometimes because you just don't know. You see a morning line, things are going to happen. Horses are going to scratch. Horses are not going to get bet. They're going to get bet. Just, just don't go all in early on these big days. Unless you like horses early, then go. You know, then go all in early and don't save for late. Just play smart. Play the way you would play uh, normally. But just know that these are good days to take a little bit bigger of a shot because. In bigger fields, you generally have horses that are 8, 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 15 to 1 that make sense in these races. You probably can't find those 10, 15 to 1 shots every day in racing anymore the way it is with the smaller fields and uh, just less racing in general. So take, I think, take a little bit bigger swings because you have the opportunity, but take those swings as far as prices are concerned. And uh, let's make some money, okay? Let's get to the third race at Pimlico. And race number three is the Sir Barton. It's a nice little three-year-old stakes race, mile and a sixteenth. And you generally see some of the kind of later developing horses or horses who are hoping to use this as a stepping stone to maybe a stakes race uh, down the line on uh, on Belmont undercard or even, you know, maybe a Jim Dandy or Travers type race, one of the bigger races in the middle of the year, hopefully, um, 
some of these three-year-olds can step forward from the inside, try for gold. Was second behind Always Mining, who we'll see in the Preakness later on, and all, and was prior to that was second behind a nice next out winner who actually has won three in a row and recently won a first level allowance at Belmont. Try for gold pressed in second for you know a bit and always mining just kind of went right by was no match. It's tough to get a gauge because how good is always mining? I still think try for gold is going to need to improve a little bit because there's just one horse that I really think looks like a standout in this field. The two is pretty good year. Uh, he he had a two length lead in the stretch and, and spit it out, and now he's going to try to go a little bit longer. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get the lead. Is he going to? Is he the type of horse who's going to be able to pass horses late? I don't think so. It, it looks like King for a Day is the is the standout in here. And so if I, if you are going to play any exotics in this race, I would just single the, the three King for a Day. The if you look at some of the horses who he's finished behind in his three career starts in his career debut in a, a sprint race, he was behind Complexity and Harvey Wallbanger. Complexity is a Grade One winner. Harvey Wallbanger is a Grade Two winner. He comes back and he wins at Belmont when he shows speed when he stretches out. And then his career thir- third career start, it's over at Churchill. It's in the slop and he goes against Grade Two Company and he's three deep into the into the turn. He's in the second flight and he makes a big early move. It's a three wide move. He takes the lead at the top of the lane. He has, he just missed third. He has the lead for a while. And I thought it was a pretty good effort against, you know, signal man who at that time was good. Pluque, Plu Q Carfe, who has Plu Q Carfe, who I don't ever know how to say that or it's name, um, who, you know, as a group two winner, Limonite, who's a stakes type, even prior to that, Kentucky Wildcat was a highly regarded one. So King for a day had faced some good company at the time coming off a layoff, obviously has to deal with that, but I think he's the the class of the field. Top line growth was very impressive in his debut. That was against Maiden Claimers, he got an easy lead. He was always clear by length. He was cruising, but how good was the group that he defeated? I don't know. So I would prefer King for a Day over top line growth. I would look to Tone Broke, I guess, as the second horse to complete an exacta, or if you're looking for some sort of exotics in this race. Tone Broke was was pretty decent as a two-year-old here in this in the US and then went over and was run and raced at made down a couple times and just never really got in into it for whatever reason. Now he's back here for Asmussen back in the US that springboard mile race was not bad he was bumped a bit into the turn he started the move but he got shut off he had to angle around he came on again I think it cost him second or I think it cost him at least third some of that trouble and then having to to rally around not a bad effort behind long range toddy who showed some ability at three so tone broke I guess would be the other one VIP ticket I think well a sharp horse right now. I'm just going to need to see it. The last few wins have been against state breads, and I think this is going to be um, a, a little bit different as far as a step up is, is concerned. So kind of a, a long shot there as we move along. So we have this race just 3-5, race number three at Pimlico. The fourth race, not really going to touch this one. Just didn't really have a strong enough opinion, and it's it, some of the uh, exotics that I like are going to start in the sixth race. So we'll just skip over the fourth race. Best of luck in race number four. Let's go to race number five. One thing I've noticed about this year is I feel like the the undercard on both the Friday and Saturday are a little bit better, at least in my opinion. The, I, what I'm finding <laughs> doesn't mean I'm going to win, but I find I'm finding a lot more price horses than I generally do on the Black Eyed Susan Friday or and the Preakness Saturday. Because what happens usually is you have, you know, Oaks Day and Derby Day with really great undercards with great stakes races. So a lot of the really good horses run in those races. And nowadays the way racing is, horses don't wheel back in two weeks. Almost almost never. Horses rarely wheel back that quick unless, you know, it's a horse is coming back in the triple crown races or a horse who, you know, maybe had some issues, but you, you just don't see it nearly as often as you used to. And 
and that that is something that hurts the Preakness and the Preakness weekend because hor- the undercard horses will skip some of the undercard races and then they'll come back and run in the Belmont weekend and their undercard races, which generally are very strong. I think you have some good wagering opportunities this this weekend and you know make sure to go in and uh, and check on the the Friday podcast if you're uh, if you're listening to this and, and interested in some of the Friday races we go through the races starting at race number seven okay the fifth race this is the James W Murphy this is a mile on the turf course hundred thousand dollar stakes race for three year olds let's start with the one shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze, uh, let's talk about his last couple races. But if, if you really look, he has faced very nice horses throughout in his career debut. He hooked a next out stakes winner. You see a thread of blue in the past performance running lines. That's a grade three winner who's a four-time winner and who was second in the, in the American turf. You see Clint Maroon, who's won three in a row, including a stakes race at Aqueduct. He, he's kept very nice company. March the 10th. He took back. He was seventh out of eighth. He was ten off early. He angled out at the top of the lane. It was a strong closing second with a big gallop out on March the tenth at Gulfstream Park. Then on April the twelfth at Keelan breaks well, but takes back to eighth. Was tucks inside, but it was just four off. Angled out five wide. It was an okay third. Now adds the blinkers. He wants and he needs to get just a little more involved early on because he can't just spot quality horses four five six lengths like he's been recently he doesn't need to be right there but just a length or two closer will help him when he engages the late kick when he in when he starts when he's asked he'll have a little more so hopefully they can get him involved a little bit i actually have him picked second in this spot i think he has a big big shot current is the number two top notch connections obviously and same, you know, you look through some of the horses who he's faced. You can obviously put a line through the last race when he was behind Maximum Security, Bodie Express, Code of Honor, and Bourbon War. That's a loaded Florida Derby. Has come back so far. Threat of Blue, who we had just mentioned, Signalman, you see, Line of Duty. So Curran has kept top company. Let's go back to the February 3rd race. That was the last time we saw him going a mile on the grass. He was taken back to ninth. He did move up on the outside. He was never really a threat to win, but he did get up for a fine third, four lengths behind a thread of blue. I don't really love him in this spot. He absolutely could win, but I think he'll be a little shorter than some of the other horses that I like, and we'll go kind of searching for prices in races like this that we feel are wide open. The next one is Eons. That's the three. Eons was... Tucked inside nicely. It was third. He was within two. He stalked. He pounced. It was a big W. And he's he's on the improve. You've seen him get a little bit better. Another one who comes out of some excellent races behind a next out maiden special weight Keeneland winner. Uh, well, he defeated a next out maiden special weight Ke- Keeneland winner, Proudest Punch. You see he was behind Digital Age, who is three for three, who won the grade two American turf on the undercard on Derby Day. The 10th place finisher. From his most recent race on April 11th. Came back to win a maiden special weight at Indy. Would not talk you off eons. I actually have him picked third in here. English B. (laughs) Another one who should be right in the mix. This is a very, very wide open race. And there are probably going to be a lot of horses that are even in price. English B was, was in a tight spot on the rail. Got shuffled back. Lost some momentum, lost a few lengths, re rallied, and I, I, you know, and I thought tried really well most recently behind Digital Age and Global Access. That's become a live race so far. So he's a horse who had some trouble last time out. Would not talk you off him. I have him picked one, two, one, two, three, four, slightly fifth in, in, you know, what looks like an all type race on paper. So in that type of race, you know, you have to lean towards the horses who are, are slight prices. Real news is the five. He finished second for the first time after two victories, and he was second to a horse named Bulletin, and at that point, Bulletin was undefeated. Bulletin was is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint winner. He just most recently lost for the first time. Real news is solid. He has speed. He can pass horses. He has dealt with some trouble. Yet another one in here that I would not talk you off. He's the number five. I have him picked fourth in here. War Film. 
what, what you know with war film, he will come running. Most recently in the American turf, he was mid pack. He was five off. He was in seventh. He was too deep. He was behind horses in the stretch. He was okay when he got some room to run. Really hard to just toss him out would be no shock. He earned a big figure for his last out start. The total wild card in this race, and I think the horse you have to bet to win if you if he's around ten to one because he's going to give you. I think a, 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 some brief speed or he'll be sitting in a great spot and should get a very good run for your money if he's 10 to 1 or over. And that's the seven, Thomas Shelby. You look at Thomas Shelby, his career debut, it was sprinting. He had a little trouble. I think you can put a line through it. Comes back, wins second time out. Comes back, not bad third out. He has a little speed. And, and that's what I think you're going to get from him here when he steps foot on the grass for the first time. His dam was... Uh, three for ten, and all of the wins were on the grass. It was a stakes winner and a graded stakes placed runner on the grass. The fools combined three winning sibs, combined eleven for eighty-eight and five hundred and fourteen thousand. Most recently, he hooked a horse named Preamble, who you're going to see a little bit later on running on the card. Preamble is in the Grade Three Chick Lang race number eleven. Thomas Shelby, I'm expecting him to be sent hard in here. Most recently, behind preamble, he was squeezed back to last. He he just never really seemed comfortable. He actually got all the way up to third before tiring. Uh, and it just he had after the the start, he just never seemed comfortable. He wanted to go. He was behind horses. It was just a tough spot for him. And I think because of that, the plan is new jock, let's send hard. So even if you don't want to maybe play him to win, use him in some of your exotics. Hopefully he can be around for a, a slice and and get get a little value in your exactas or tries or supers. But I'm going to play this horse to win at anything over 10 to 1. I have him on top. Empire of War. He was wide behind slow fractions last time out. I, I really don't have many knocks on him. I just like others more. I need to see a, a little bit more. Tybalt, who tries the grass for the first time, all three of his sibs on turf one, they're a combined eight for 35 for 322,000 as he tries grass for the first time. And, you know, look at him. Recently, he's hooked always mining in four of the last five starts. Obviously, he lost all of those starts. And the only time he didn't face always mining, he won. But, I think he's facing a couple nice horses who have shown some ability on the grass and I he'd have to not only improve he he'd have to improve a little bit and do so on the grass. He's a big price I think for a reason. Maybe the bottom of exotics because of the little bit of of turf in the pedigree. He could uh he could, you know, come running late if they go quick early on. Gearhead just need to see more from Gearhead. To round out the field So in race number 5 at Pimlico One of the tougher races all day to handicap And a fun race to handicap So let's go and put the prices Some prices on top Let's go with the 7 On top Thomas Shelby Over the 1 Shooting in the breeze And then the 3 Eons And then the 5 Real news how deep do you want to go? Though I rank them pretty much all. Seven, one, three, five, four, six, nine. Now I'll, I'll use them in some exotics. So fifth race, the James W. Murphy. So we'll play all the seven to win and also a try here. One, seven with one, three, four, five, seven. Remember, you can play 50 cent tries because it would be nice to get either the one or the seven on top. And what we'll do is they'll be complementing each other. I think the one will be coming from off the pace, whereas the seven will likely be setting the pace or sitting right off the pace. And maybe we can get uh, either one of them to win, and then this trial pay nice if 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 these horses are both you know eight, six eight to one or above. Either one of them wins. That's all. That's all it'll take to pay. Let's move on to race number six, the Maryland Sprint. Start out with New York Central. We don't have to go too far to find the horse who I like in this race the most. But I do think there are three horses that I'll probably end up using in in most of the exotics. New York Central has been pretty good all along. If you look throughout his career, he really only has, 
I'd say one bad race, and that was in the Sunland Derby. In the race most recently, I thought was pretty good. He was just two or three off, but he was caught three, four deep. He was in between horses. He went to the outside. He got within a length before tiring. He loomed up. He, he flattened out. It was a pretty good effort. And it was just his first start in a couple months. So, you know, second start off a short break now. And it's just his third start of the year. I think he's has a big opportunity to take a nice step forward here. Let's look at the horses who he finished behind last time out because he was fifth, but it was a big field. And he finished behind, honestly, I think four better horses who probably would have all, who probably would all be favored if they were in this race, or they would be very, very logical contender, contenders at, I think, shorter prices than what New York Central will end up being. Cause I don't want to take shorter than seven to two or so on New York Central, but he was behind. Bobby's Wicked One, who just finished second next out in the Grade 1 Churchill Downs. Warriors Club, who is a graded stakes winner in his Grade 1 place and has earned 796000 And Limousine Liberal, who's a multiple graded stakes winner and who has earned $1.8 million. And then Recruiting Ready, who is a graded stakes winner. And, re- and Recruiting Ready was actually the horse who won the Chick Lang back in 2017 when it was not a graded stakes. So... He was behind better horses who would all be very logical in this spot. You go to the two fellowship. He's over his last 10. His last win was at six furlongs. That was back in January of 2018. But he just seems like he will need a lot to go his way with his late running style. Parade of Nations is the three. He really looks like a long shot in here. He was claimed for 5,000 a couple starts back and he's stepping up. And this might even be a little farther than where he's best. Maybe just a little pace to the party. Lewis Field is the four. And he's the horse who I'm completely going to take a shot against. He is very nice. But he's just not... Every time he's tried to step up into graded stakes company, he's faltered. He was third in this race, beaten six lengths in 2018. He was fifth when he stepped up into Greatest Stakes Company at Laurel. I think he's a nice, like, overnight stakes type horse, but I just don't think he's as good as some of the top horses in here. He sat behind a 99 to 1 shot last out. He opened up two. He had no excuses at all. He could not seal the deal. He lost to a horse named Lakai, who you see in, in some of the other past performance running lines. But his last. Four starts, he's only one of four, and he's a three-time beaten favorite against Softer. This is going to be a much tougher spot than 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 those races he's been in as of late. He was the beaten favorite, or he was beaten in this race last year. As I mentioned, when he ran third behind Switzerland. So... We're passing on Lewis Field in here. Let's go to Always Sunshine. The first time gelding. You see, he's faced some tough company. You see Roy H. You also see he was behind, you know, Switzerland and Lakai, a couple of horses who just showed up in Lewis Field's past performances. I need to see a little bit more from Always Sunshine, but he he's capable with big efforts, right? You can see it, he's just he hasn't raced since December. The first time gelding, maybe that'll help him. You can excuse his last start, but just don't like him as much as uh, like a couple others in here. Wentz is going to be, I think, tough from a, a, a speed standpoint because he might be the quickest in here. It's going to be, I think he actually might be a little quicker than Lewis Field. So I, if I had to wager on who ends up getting the lead early in here. I think it might be Wentz, but I do think they're going to be battling, and that's why I like New York Central, who has enough speed to, I'm I'm hoping, work himself into a nice spot from the rail and not get into trouble. He can just use his speed enough to get into a good spot and then sit behind and let, let the speed battle go on in front of him and then find a way through. So Wentz, 
I think if anyone can get the lead and take him all the way, it's Wentz, or maybe he can sit off a little bit. I think he's very talented. He has big speed, and then he battled back after being headed. He battled back. He was down by, like, a neck. He looked like he was done, but he comes back on the inside, and he has had plenty of time off after that effort. Over a month now, he should be able to give a a really good account of himself. Rounding out the field is Proforma, who... Will launch a late bid. The race that I like was on the grass last time out and came running, and it was a good setup race. It was the first start since November. It was on April the 20th, going five and a half furlongs on the grass. Now it comes back to the dirt. He's pretty nice on both surfaces, actually. He's, you know, I was wondering what surface he's better on. He's, he might be equally as good on both, to be fair. To be fair, Letter Kenny folks out there, shout out. November 22nd, he sat 4th, 5th, he was just a few lengths off, he was too deep, he was in the clear, and he was behind a horse named Windtime, who has won 3 in a row, is 8 for 11 with 2 seconds and a 3rd, that's a very nice animal, and look who he was in front of, Switzerland, who you see Switzerland beating Always Sunshine, and beating Louisfield, so when you're playing the common rival game, Performa looks a little bit better, right? The way I have this race, 1-7-7. Six. Those are my top three. One, seven, six. We'll bet the one New York Central. Anything around uh, seven to two or over. Give you a pick five here in the sixth race. I was saving these till the end before, but I guess I can just give this one when the the sixth race goes, and maybe I'll repeat them at the end too. Pick five. You can play in race number six. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Pick four. Pick four is in the sixth. Pick five is in the ninth. So this is a pick four. A pick four in race six at Pimlico on Saturday. One, six, seven, with five, with all, with four, six. You want to go a little bit bigger. If you're not a single person, maybe you don't like the horse that I'm going to single. One, six, seven, with two, three, five, six, seven, with all, with four, six. Let's move on from race number six to race number seven. We have the the searching. This is for Phillies and Mares, three year olds and up, a mile and a half on the turf course. From the inside, you have So Innocent, who showed speed from the outside, but now we'll have to go, we'll stretch back out to a mile, we'll stretch out to a mile and a half, and we'll be facing, I think, much tougher. This was a horse who was 85 to 1 last time out, and this race is equally as good with a couple legitimate graded stakes type horses in here. Homeland Security is the deuce. She sat behind slow fractions, she was wide, she was done early, she was behind a nice horse named Santa Monica who is a grade 2 winner next time out that's a nice one and she's kind of a middle to top tier turf mare Santa Monica is she's a good race kind of bad race she's the last couple so she's been a little hard to gauge but I would not be shocked to see her show up with a good effort I just think this is a race where it's kind of a chalky race and I think a standout so that's the single that you see you heard in the pick 4 that I'm going to have um, we'll get to that horse in just a minute. The three Osar, who is lightly raced with some upside, but has not raced in September. Most recently was racing at Kentucky Downs, broke well, and was was aided when one of the rivals in the race went wide into the first turn and then forced a couple other horses wide. What it did is it opened up the rail and it opened up the lead for Osar. And I don't think she's a need the lead type. The barn is plenty capable off a of plus one any day layoff. They do a good job with limited stock and, and limited numbers. Would be no surprise. I have her picked one, two, three, fourth in here. Coach Whip is the four. She broke well. She sat second. She dropped back a bit. She she dropped back when Icky Masho made the big move. She was okay third. Not bad. It wasn't a bad effort. She picked up a a nice grade three placing in there. But just not quite on the level with some of the others who I think are are set up for better efforts. Icky Masho looks like a a real standout short priced horse in here. Would never bet a horse like this to win. But in the multi-race exotics, I think probably a pretty logical singer. Single? The singer. (laughs) Logical singer. Uh, One of the more likely winners in the sequence. Been a very consistent, right? And if you look at the two, you look through 
all the races since coming in to North America and all the races in the Atfield barn. There are two bad ones, and one of and the, the two bad races are at the end of the year and then the first start off the bench after a few months off. Which means, okay, this horse tailed off a little bit, need a little time off, came back, needed a start. And so the pattern really makes a lot of sense to me with this horse. You can make legitimate excuses. Just put a line, if you have your past performances, put a line right through that race on November 25th, 2018. Put a line right through the race on January 26th. Then look at how nice and how consistent Icky Masho's past performances are. Right behind that Santa Monica, the same Santa Monica that crushed Homeland Security. Although, you know, I don't think that was Homeland Security's best effort. But if they all show up with their best efforts and Icky Masho shows up with like a B plus, B, B minus effort, that'll likely still win this race. Sat a few lengths off in the clear around the half mile mark, made a bid, a, a big move up to the lead and cleared off a length. It was nice. She shouldn't be too far off. She doesn't really have a ton of other speed in here to deal with. So, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if she's really close early on. In a race like this, generally like one or two might get out, but if they're if they handle her aggressively, it would it wouldn't really shock me at all because there are really no no speed demons in here. Maybe one of the long shots or a horse who's just kind of stretching out from one of the the slightly shorter mile mile and a sixteenth races. Vivina, I think, is a a nice underneath horse in here. I have her picked second. I like the win and I like the way she's Progressing right now she was almost 20 lengths out of it behind It was a really spread out field there were three Sets of two horses Spread out together two horses battling And then a few lengths back to another set of two And then lengths back to another Set of two and she angled four Deep and it was it was nice You know you made up a ton of ground Vavina the race set up very well For her the way it was with those Horses kind of battling and and, and it was spread out and didn't have to worry about traffic or anything like that. But I think she's able to take another step forward and sneak in the mix here at a price and maybe spice up some of the exotics under Iki Masho. Layla Noor is another one I feel sort of like that about. She hasn't raced since July, so I'm not sure if she's going to be ready to win this race. But you can make excuses for her last start when she was favored. Just put a line right through it. She sent to the bench for a while. And just look at her turf form. You know, you see... She wins her first start on the grass in August of 2017. And she tries Greatest Stakes Company. She's behind Rushing Fall, and she has a little trouble that day. That's not a bad effort. And then the the June 20th race in 2018, not a bad effort when she's third in a small stakes race. I w- would not be surprised to see her run well. Maybe she comes in and picks up some pieces late. But it's just a mile and a half. So I, what is she going to show the same late running style? Is she going to be a little more forwardly placed because she's coming off the bench. I'm just not sure where she is. And that's why she might be a nice underhorse because maybe she is a little a little fresh off the bench and she gets involved early. Peach of a gal. The two outside horses I just don't really love in this spot. Uh, Violet Blue is going to have to impl- improve on Homeland Security, who I think is going to have to improve on others to make a dent in here. And Peach of a gal, I think just looks like a, a, a deserved long shot. Off of a, a couple races that I didn't love a, a whole heck of a lot. So in the seventh race, play this with the five, the chalk horse on top and single, and some of the uh, the exotics over the six. So the five, Iki Masho over the six, Vavina over the two, Homeland Security over the three, Osari, and over the seven. Layla Noor. So those are some of the horses to use in the bottom of your exotics. Eighth race. Another one that I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on because if you heard in the pick fours that I gave out just a few minutes back, this is an all race to me. I I don't love anyone in here. The outside couple horses wouldn't shock me. The only and and with using a couple of prices and you know some of the other Races and in the first leg of the sequence, we'll just go all here and hope for the best. I'm sure a lot of folks are gonna and shorten up with over deliver, but I don't know. I'm I wouldn't I, all, but if you're because if you're gonna play all, I'm I'm just normally I would say play all and not the favorite. 
I don't know how how heavy a favorite over deliver is going to be if he gets bet down. You know, it's a race where if you're playing exotics, maybe play all and just chuck him out because the point of playing all if is searching for a price. You don't even really need the short price horses because that that def- that goes against what your purpose is, right? So, if you're starting exotics in the eighth race and the nine gets bet down, I would play against the nine. You know, he's the only type of horse who I, would, I if he's cold on the board, but I would never play a horse like this to win. And I'm I'm I didn't really love him. At the end of 2018, early 19, in, in when he was behind Win Win Win, and, you know he beat Bodhi Express in in his career debut. Nah, just uh, to me in all race. So that's how I'll play the uh, the exotics. If you know, even all but but over deliver, sure. If, if you want to do that, it's the, that's that's the smarter way to play it. Ninth race. The very one, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, five furlongs on the turf course, not in jeopardy. I'm concerned about her trip from the rail. She's going to go second start off a four-month break. She will cut back a little bit, but five furlongs, she's not going to be quick enough, I don't think, to get out of out of trouble early on, she's going to have to take way back and likely come around or find a way through. And I don't know if she's even quite good enough to to deal with the top two in here, who I, I, I kind of like a little bit. I think the top two who I have are pretty standout. The deuce is dare to be. She needs a big pace battle to set up her late kick. Tough to really gauge on, on the slop last time out. You can excuse... The race is on the on the main track. She's been a little bit better on the grass, but she and she'll come running. So you know, maybe third and fourth spots if you if you're trying to go deeper in this race or play those type of exotics. That I don't have dared. I'm only going to use two, and I'm only going to give you like two horses to use. I on Berlin the three. She just looks to be in a tad tough, right? She won last time out. I just think she's this is a little bit too tough for her, but she's a nice little turf sprinter. Just a. a a bit over where I think she would be able to succeed. I like the four quite a bit. Super Echo. I think if you can get anything over about you know three to one or so, that's the fair price on on Super Echo in here. It, look at her three turf starts. They're actually very good. Her first turf start, she wins a maiden forty. At Saratoga, so it's a strong maiden claimer. Comes back again at Saratoga. She broke well, but so did a couple others. So she took back, she sat, she hit the rail, she was waiting for room, which is nowhere to go. It was legit trouble, just absolutely nowhere to go ever, never got an opportunity to run. And then she was on the dirt for a little while, and she was fine on the dirt. She comes back to the grass immediately and wins again. She broke well, she sat. She just waited to pick out a nice position. She was second. She was patiently waiting. She was asked. She responded. It was a very professional win. And I'm just keying off her grass races. They've been good. She legitimately, she was only beaten a couple lengths in that race when she had trouble. I don't know if she would have won that race, but she would have been a lot closer. This is a nice filly on the grass. I think she has a big shot to win this race here. And uh, we'll play her anything over like three or four to one. Bath and tennis is the five. Just not really sure what to do with her after uh, it's kind of a lackluster start behind a, a next out winner. It's come out back a live race that January 11th race at Gulfstream. I just uh, I'll have to pass on her until I see a little bit more. Jojo Air is a, a nice filly. She just beat the boys and she just beat Bulletin. Bulletin, who was fourth. Uh, that was his first loss. He's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint winner. He's very, very fast. JoJo Air battled with Bulletin, who was undefeated. Looked like JoJo Air was done for a second, and then boom, kicks into a second gear. It was really, really impressive. And now JoJo Air, after beating the boys, comes back and will face the Phillies and Mares. So. Just beats the boys. Now comes back, faces the Phillies and Mares, but we'll have to be facing the some some older in here, as you can see. So she's a three year old now facing the older. But I was really impressed with that effort from JoJo Air. I think she's going to be really tough. What I like is that 
She doesn't need the lead. I think she can press just off. JoJo Air will be very tough in here. So for me, just four and six, really, as you go through like Angel at War, no real strong case because I thought this is a tough spot for a horse to make their turf debut and will be, you know, dealing with, I think, a, a, some other, a li- some other speed right next door with JoJo Air. Super Echo is not exactly going to be far out of it. And then My Cordia is Mercy, I think, right? My research is correct. Another who's just, I, I think, I'd like to see her at double her price. That's why I'm not quite as interested in if if the eight is eight to one, sure, include her in some exotics. And then Wild About Star. Just last few races, what I don't like is they're all followed by layoffs. You no know, race, layoff, race, layoff, race, layoff. Want to see a little bit more, and uh, I want to see this mare string a couple races together before I start to use her in some exotics. So ninth race. Let's play an exact box with the four and the six. As long as the four doesn't get bet down, as long as they both don't get bet down, right? I'm not going to box the top two betting choices like that. You don't, you generally don't want to do that when they get bet down. But if a couple of the horses get played, if the four is around, you know, four to one or so, I mean, I, I expect the six JoJo Air to get bet down a, a little bit more. I wouldn't be shocked if JoJo Air is like eight to five in that mix. And and Super Echoes, you know, four to one, nine to two or so. So we'll, we'll exact the box, the two of them, and play a pick five. You have that pick five that starts in race number nine. So I'll give you the pick five if you want to play other, you know, pick four that starts in the tenth or pick three that starts in the eleventh. You can just use the numbers that I am playing for the pick five and go from there. So the pick five that starts in race number nine, four six with one three. Seven with two, seven, eight with two, three, eleven, twelve with one, two, four, eleven. That ends in the Preakness. So those horses to end in the Preakness would be War of Will, Bourbon War, Improbable, and Laughing Fox. One, two, four, eleven. So one more pick five for you. A different, a slightly different approach. We'd go four, six with. One two three seven with two eight with two three eleven with one two four eleven. Those pick fives start in race number nine at Pimlico. Let's move on. Race number ten. This is the Gallaret. Spoke to Nick Hines, the Sarge. Um, if, when you're listening to this, pull up, or if you're on iTunes or whatever, go subscribe to the Mike Abadir Show. If you haven't already, you can go to the MikeAbadir Show dot com. You can, if you need to find a link, you can look. Through it, uh, you can find so in my profile or any of my tweets information in there. And we had Nick Hines on for a really nice interview. We, we talked about the Preakness and the undercard, and there was a horse that he likes quite a bit. He talked about I'm so fancy, and I, I I think it's hard to play this race and not include I'm so fancy in some way, shape, or form because it just feels like she has faced much much better, and she now comes into the barn uh, of a very very good conditioner. This is a nice five year old mare. She hasn't raced in September. And now, you know, she comes over from Ireland to the U.S., but I just think she is quality. She has faced some quality, magical. You see some nice, nice horses in the running lines. And if you were able to watch a couple of her races, especially the big ones, she's a quality, quality mare who can show up with a big, big effort. And I think an effort, a top effort from her is better than anybody else's top efforts. And so unless she's a really short price, those are the type of horses who I always like using in my my exotics. Because you, you want the horses who who have the opportunity to come up with a, an effort big enough to beat the field. And I, I think you'll get that from this invader and this new face. So the one I'm so fancy, I think you have to use all over. I actually have her third only because I have two other horses that I hope will be bigger prices. But I will use all three of them in all the exotics. It's not really a I have her third. It's I have these three horses as the horses that I'll include in all th- in the exotics. Inflexibility. I, I'll pick her fourth in here, and I really don't have any knocks. She's just a nice mare who picks up checks. Again, would be no shock, but she hasn't raced since October. It's not a big deal for Brown, for Chad Brown, who can who can get him ready to fire off the bench. We all know that, and we are never surprised to see Chad Brown winning. I just don't want to take a really short price on her, where I think there are a couple other horses in here that are a little more interesting to me. One of them right next door. The way I am. Okay, let's look at the way I am 
And, you know, you go through her career since coming over from France in October of 2017. She really only has two poor races. She's faced some nice ones. She's behind Daddy as a legend. She was behind Rushing Fall a couple different times, got stormy. The most recent race, it was her first start since August. So she hadn't raced from August of 2018 to April of 2019. And she is, she's in a bit tight early. She's sixth. She's about five or six lengths off. She's chasing lone speed of Lady Joan. She moves in between horses. She takes a big shot. She just doesn't have enough because she's chasing lone speed and she's coming off the bench, but it's it's a solid effort. You know, compared to some of the other horses that she's faced, I think this is going to be a nice spot for her. And this is, you know, class relief if the race sets up very, if the race sets up well for her. And I think it does. Rushing falls seven for eight, 1.5 million, the grade one Jenny Wiley winner and the third place finisher behind the way I am in the, in the April race last out one at Gulfstream Park next out was a stakes winner, $75,000 stakes winner. And the fourth place finisher one next out an optional 25. So she comes out of <clears throat> really productive really strong races and I think she's set for a big big effort so the way I am I have picked I have put in the second spot I have seven three one slightly but as I said I think one three seven are the three horses that I will be using in all most uh, in all the exotics Mitchell Road would play underneath and I will have a trifecta That you'll see where I have Mitchell Road in the under spots. She is quality. She was able to defeat Bo Recall, who after that won a fairground stakes race and then the grade two distaff mile at Churchill over got Stormy, who you see in some of the other past performance running lines. So Mitchell Road has, you know, been keeping nice company and been defeating quality horses. I don't like the way the race shapes up for her, though. I think there's going to be other speed in here. Inflexibility is going to sit close. Dynatail is not exactly going to be far, far behind. And I don't think Mitchell Road is going to get things as easy as she's been able to when she's able to just kind of sit right behind. So with the the speed right next door, likely, and then the speed um, likely from inflexibility, at least pressing, I just don't think Mitchell Road will be able to seal the deal in here. So I will have only in the underneath spots Mitchell Road. Dynatail, she's going for her third consecutive win. And... I really don't have many knocks. I just thought she got a perfect trip. And I I just don't think with kind of the same thing with Mitchell Road. I don't think because of the presence of them next to each other, I th- I think that might hurt their chances to sit. They're both gonna gonna be going a little bit. And I, I think they're both going to be aggressive when it comes crashing down and it hurts inside. Dun, 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 dun. Hogan's holiday. I don't think it's gonna be Hogan's holiday today though. I don't just looks like a, a long shot in, in here to me. There are some races in there that are not, they're not bad that are good enough to compete with this race. Like the three back race on March the 2nd at Gulfstream park. That's not a bad effort. And even last out, that's not a bad closing fifth. Go watch the race on April the 27th. Kind of wide. I, I wouldn't talk you off using this horse in the bottom. Hogan's holiday. It's just, you know, one of those races. That's what's good about the card. Lots of, you know, lots of races that look competitive. You can't use them all. We'll, we'll include a couple other price horses in here, like the seven in the Lee. I think in the Lee we'll get back because he's she's the type of like horse who had trouble that will generally get back. As if people will see the replay. April the tenth. Let's go. Actually, let's go back to September the eighth. She's slow early. She gets to the inside. She gets all the way up to third. She's like right on the heels of the leader. She never really seemed comfortable that day and when she was down on the inside. And then again, she gets stuck on the inside on April the 10th. She's inside. She's saving ground, but she's waiting for room. She's, you know, five off. She's in fifth, sixth, seventh spot. She just never had a chance to run. She was loaded looking for room. Let's get her outside. Now she's drawn more towards the outside, so hopefully... We can kind of keep her in the clear. I would not be shocked if she ends up even a little bit wide in here. 
trying to keep her in the clear because of the the trouble down on the inside the last couple times. So we'll see if Johnny V can angle her to the outside because I have her as you know really the co top pick, actually the top selection seven three one, and it's really uh, hoping that she's going to be five to one or over. You know she was favored last out over Dinah Tail, and I thought she ran really really well in there in the lead. Against Viva Vegas, she's capable of picking up pieces in graded stakes, as she's shown. I just think she's an under. She's 0 for her last 12. From a from a win standpoint, I like the 1, 3, and 7 as win horses. And I'll, I'll go against Barca a little bit in here also. I think with the outside draw, didn't see much for her first time for Brown. Can she win? Of course, any of these can win. She's proven some quality over in France as a Group Three winner. It's a case of liking the 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 seven three one, expecting big performances from those three. And you know, and if you play exotics, I think I would play some sort of exotics with those horses. You know, over the big the the prices in the race, right? One three four, like maybe three seven over one three. Four, six, seven, eight. Try to get inflexibility out of the mix, or maybe you want to toss some flexibility in there some way. But I think you you try to use the the seven and the three. Hook them up with the one. Maybe we can get get things going here again. If in the lead doesn't get bet down, which is very like very likely, very plausible that she gets bet down in half. I just don't want less than that five, six to one on her. And if that's the case, then we go to the three. The way I am. And if she's around 10, 12 to 1, then she's the play. She's the win play, at least. That's how you have to look at every race, right? One thing I had a tough time doing when I was a little younger and um, just kind of earlier on when when I was playing the races is, okay, I like this horse. I think the five's going to win. And, you know, the five's 10 to 1. You think the five maybe should be 6 to 1 and the five open and the five's 10 to one on the morning line. You think the horse should be maybe six to one and the horse ends up going off at like three to one and wins. And then, you know, I'm mad because I didn't bet him in that case. You, you have to have a, there has to be a point where you draw the line, right? Don't, we have to be okay sometimes with, with horses. We like winning and us knowing that the process is what matters. It's not always the result. If you continue with the right process and play the price horses over the chalk horses and don't play the favorites that you don't like and don't just use favorites as a saver to make you feel better, when you win, it'll be a little less likely, but you'll win more and it'll be better for you in the long run. Your ROI will be better. Promise you that. It's going to be like baseball. You know, your, your statistics are going to be lower. You're going to win less, but the times you hit, you're going to hit bigger and you're going to have more money if you're able to just continue to stick it out and just play a little smarter with your same bankroll. 7 3 1 in the 10th at Pimlico. Moving on, race number 11. Just three races left here. Folks, 11 is the Chick Lang. Another nice. Undercard race. I think there are a couple quality horses in here. Let's start with Lexitonian from the rail. That's the one. He broke well. He sat close. He was three deep. I just, he, he was okay. But he now he has the rail draw in a big field in a sprint race. And how good is his best? You know, he was fifth by a hidden scroll who was one of the, uh, the very, like, I guess polarizing horses on the Derby Trail this year. Against Lexitonian. The two still dreaming will be my top selection in here. So let's go through still dreaming race by race. My first off, let me give you the concern, right? I would love if this was seven furlongs, and I'm worried that he might be a little bit better at, at seven furlongs to the mile. I think six might be be a tad short but the rate he's better now than he was when he he went six furlongs in his career debut and the race I feel like could set up well for him there are a few different versions of this race where there's a ton of speed and he comes flying he sat nicely he was three off four three four off he was in third fourth he was four deep and in between and he was able to get up for a victory He's another one who ran into always mining, but put a line through those mile and 16th races. Those are just a little too far. This is 
more in his wheelhouse. I think six furlongs to a mile, but let's hope he gets the trip. We'll lean slightly towards him because of the price. When you have a horse who, who should be 10, 12 to one, they're not going to, they're going to have knocks, right? That's why they're 10, 12 to one. There are going to be, you know, maybe this race is run and that he's just too far back or this isn't his preferred distance. But if you can envision and you can map out how this horse could win at a price, those are the ones you got to take a shot at sometimes. And that's where we'll go with, with still dreaming. Malpies, the three. This is the acid test for him. He's looking for his third win in a row. He is really fast. He just won a stakes at Churchill. He won nicely at Fairgrounds prior to that. You see Federal Case in the past performance running lines for Gladiator King, another one of the common rivals. It's a, a horse that they both defeated. I don't think the race sets up very well for him. I think Malpai will run into other speed. Um, he's going to have to deal with Cabot. He's going to have to deal with Gladiator King. And then he's going to have to deal with two horses like Pyron and Preamble, who I don't think are as quick, and I don't think they want to be right on the lead. They seem like they're best when they can sit just off, but they'll be pressing. I don't think neither one of them are slow horses. They're going to be right in the mix. I'll be using them in the exotics. So against the three Malpies, Admiral Lynch, I think same type of thing. He was okay when he was second to Charlestown last time out, but he's been better when he's able to be right on the lead, and I don't think this... This is going to be a race that that bodes well for him with other legit speed in here. Cabot, very quick, battled for the lead, was too deep of four, was up close, really didn't run poorly, and it was in the slop. So, you know, sometimes you start to fade in the slop and the margin looks a little bit bigger because you, you get a little more tired. You back up a little bit. Maybe, maybe it would only have been a length or two and it ends up being three, three and a half. Um, at, at the very least, he should... Be flashing the speed And he has shown the ability to come from off the pace And pass horses if something happens So I like horses like that But I I don't think that's where Or that will be the game plan with him Because he's very quick Why take away that weapon And the same can be said for Gladiator King Who is now a graded stakes winner He was the horse who Was kind of in that controversy with Hidden Scroll As he was that pace horse In the Fountain of Youth Remember when everybody was wondering Why Hidden Scroll kind of Went real quick and it was because It was Gladiator King who was kind of Battling with him early on He's honest He sends hard So that's what you're going to get from him And that's why I'm pretty pretty sure That this race will have a good early pace And a fast early pace Because you're you're likely going to get Gladiator King Sending hard, especially on a cutback Now and if he gets the lead and he's able to clear On the cutback, he could be pretty tough I just don't see that happening with the pace Next door to him with Cabot Malpies, Speed And then the two other horses that will likely be pressing Right next door I think we have a couple quality three year olds coming up First for Steve Asmussen in Pyron Pyron Is The seven And he's two for two And he most recently broke on top But was okay with sitting just behind He didn't need to get caught up In that first quarter mile battle And that could be really key in this race If he's okay with sitting and then moving He can just sit off enough To not have to worry about Getting softened up a little bit early By a couple other horses who will be flashing speed Pyron is legit Three horses that I'll be using In most of the exotics Almost all of them I have Pyron picked third in here I have this race 287 uh, But I think gets gets a great trip And should be sitting right behind a couple speeds Preamble's been very good in his three starts He Was a close up fourth He was you know Just a couple lengths off he was four deep He was in the clear And he looked like a winner And he looked Very professional in winning He has every right to take another step forward too. second start off the bench Just his second start as a three year old Very very nice animal You see old Or you see uh, Topper T in the past performance running lines for Preamble You see him up there also for Gladiator King They both defeated this one But Pre- Preamble won pretty easily I, mean, I don't think you have to worry about you know margins And, and play that game He beat him by a couple more lengths than, than this one did And I just don't know if Gladiator King Gets the kind of setup in here That Preamble does Slightly off the pace instead of maybe right on it Confessor Going for three in a row But a big step up having to deal with a couple nice three-year-olds to his inside. So 
no confessor for me. Race number 11, 287, 287 for me with still dreaming a horse who is a fair win win price at 10 to 1. Might be forgotten about. If a lot of money comes through on either the 7 or the 8, it would not surprise me. They're both quality if either one of them gets bet down or maybe they both end up taking a lot of money. And then maybe a horse like the 2 floats up. So try to get that 2 horse in some of your exotics if possible. I think might be a horse who benefits if... if we can see... I can envision, a, a, as I said, a, this race being run where Malpais, maybe even Admiral Lynch shows a little more speed than he was able to show last time out because he doesn't want to try to let... He doesn't want to try to get so far behind Malpies who, who beat him up by four plus lengths. Cabot will be showing some speed. Gladiator King will be showing some speed. And very easily Pyron and or Preamble could get caught up in in the pace. They're young, lightly raced horses. If everyone around them is going to lead, maybe they get sucked right up into it. And that's why I feel like it's worth putting a few bucks on the two still dreaming. Two, eight, seven though. Not really going to chuck out... M- Many of uh won't chuck out the two seven eight in the main pick five that they played. Maybe if you play another one, you can play something with the two and the eight. I, I prefer the eight slightly over the seven, so preferring uh preamble slightly over Pyron. Moving to race number twelve. This is the Dixie, Gray Two, Mile and a sixteenth, three year olds and upworth on the grass, twenty four seven. It was his race was okay, but it was just against a lot softer, right? You're stepping up now, facing with a facing a much tougher group, so won't spend a whole lot of time on twenty four seven because I just think he's overmatched in here. I like Just Howard quite a bit enough to have made him my top selection. He's been competitive really for most of his career, and you can go to some of the the races where he didn't run well, and I think you can say, okay, maybe it was a tough field he ran into a couple tough horses and they were races that were layoffs you know the hollywood race the hollywood derby you can you can put a line through uh the race of santa Anita, the twilight derby really wasn't as bad as it looked uh, when he was sixth beaten five lengths other than that you don't have a ton of poor performances obviously you can cross out the the race when he's he's on the main track and because this is a horse who's just much better on the turf focus in on those turf races so let's talk about his last start he was Really, in between, he was in between horses, and he was moving nicely late. And the winner, Irish Straight, was zigging and zagging and cut him off. I, you know, he was back and forth, and it really impacted Just Howard. I think he could have won that last race. Now he takes the blinkers off. It says steadied late. You know, go back and watch that race. He had legitimate trouble late when the winner, Irish Straight, was going back and forth and really shutting off Just Howard from the opportunity he, who was like searching for a, a way through. So I, I think you got to give him a, a play right back here. Just Howard. Worthy of a win wager, but the horse right next door. So it, the, the only reason why I'm not sure how I play this race on the win end is because I also like admission office who I will pick second in here. Really, I have, again, like a top three that I feel like I'll use in most of the exotics with two, three, and 11. And then we'll use the four Catholic, uh, Catholic or the 12 Catholic boy in the fourth spot in some other places. I don't, I'm not really against him. The mile and 16th will be okay. We'll get to him in just a minute, but admission office is another one. If he's a nice price, if he floats up, would not talk you off playing him to win. Play whoever gives you the best value. You know, maybe it's the two, maybe it's the three in here, maybe the eleven floats up a little bit. Those are the horses who I'd key in on. Admission office, lightly raced, last out was three deep, was mid pack, but moved up early to win. Uh, moved up early to win. It, it seemed like he had multiple runs. He was kind of push button. And the fourth place finisher came back to win next out at Churchill and earned a, a 96 buyer when er, when winning an optional 62. The horse that he beat in still regard, he would probably be five to one or so in this race, right? Five to one, maybe under. I'm saying five to one max. I wouldn't be shocked if he would be one of the betting choices in here in still regard. So. He just beat that horse. He's lightly raced. We don't really know how good this one is yet. He did nothing wrong when in the Chad Brown barn. Admission office. Major shot in race number 12. Parrot 
He's been sprinting lately, just a total wild card who's coming in for, from Australia. Tough to include without uh, just seeing a couple races from this one. Have at it. I want to see, uh, just I'd love to see a little more recency from him. He's a little bit better going longer. I think this is a little short for him. Coming off the bench looks like a setup race for me. Quality, talented enough to win this race. Just think that others are better suited for getting the victory in this particular spot. Have at it as a horse that I would play most likely next time out, depending on how he runs today. But I think this could be a good setup race for him next out. Flameway is going to scratch and run on Friday. So real story is the pace. He wants to go. He got an easy lead last time out when he lost to Irish straight. And, and out of that race, I actually thought that just Howard ran the best. They all come out of that same race on April the 20th. Again, it looks like he should be on the lead. Again, it looks like he can control things up front. I wouldn't talk you off you know, bottom of exotics with him, but I'm, I'm going to play a try with the four horses that I like. And I, the real key is what happens with Catholic boy is Catholic boy going to be sent fresh off the bench or does he sit? So the way that I see this race unfolding real story, got, the, got the lead last time out, got an easy lead going a mile last time out. It was his second start off the bench. It wasn't, you know, his first start off a layoff where he had a legit excuse to get tired and, and need the race. Now he's going to have to deal with tougher. Even if he gets things his own way, he's going to have to deal with tougher. He's going to have to deal with tougher going an extra 16th of a mile. And he's going to have to deal with the horse like Catholic boy who I envision breathing right down his neck. So I don't see real story winning this race, but he, with this speed, it's kind of dangerous sometimes to toss a horse who could be lone speed and cruising on the front end. Flash Phelps. That's the eight. It looks like a, a a long shot. His last, you know, three or four. He's an, he wasn't far off in that common race that that April twentieth race at Laurel behind you know Real Story and O Dionysus, and it was right there next to to just Howard. I just liked the others, and I thought they were better out of that same race in particular. Just Howard, something awesome. Haven't seen enough lately. And this is just not an easy spot for a horse that has like zero turf success at all, has only raced on the grass one time. You're facing a couple legit turf horses. O Dionysus is next up. Another one who was only in that common race on April 20th at Laurel. They're only beating a couple lengths, you know, four horses. I'm think all coming out of that, that same race. But again, I just liked a couple others more in here. He he is a a little bit sneaky, though. I'll I'll tell you. Because he's capable, and if he can improve a little bit off of that effort, that was just his first start since September. Just an instance of, of, you know, can't use them all. Have to to pick and choose who is the top tier and who's next tier. Inspector Lindley, I I think, is the most likely winner of this race. And but again, that doesn't mean that's worthy of a wager because I feel like he'll get bet down a little bit. His race at Fairgrounds on March the twenty third. He's another one that you go through recently, and he's just really consistent overall. His last like ten races or so, he was defeated by Bricks and Mortar, who's one of the better turf horses out there, probably the best turf horse right now in, in the U.S. And Inspector Lindley. Was three, four wide chasing a very slow pace. Look how, how slow they were going. 51, 115 and one. They were going so slow that bricks and mortar was barely able to get by market off. It was a wicked nose bob that uh, market off lost and bricks and mortar barely gets by because they were going that slow. So it was just a, Inspector Lindley's up against it when you're wide, when you're chasing that type of a slow pace, comes right back, wins the stakes race, the small stakes now. That's a nice little race to prep race to set him up for a, an effort where he, this is the type of graded stakes that he can win. I don't know if he's quality enough to win a grade one, maybe right now, who knows, you know, Shug's a great trainer. I, from what we've seen, I don't know if he's good enough to win a grade one type or like a really loaded grade two, but this is, this is a race that's right in his wheelhouse. And I think he's going to show up with a really big effort. And then you have Catholic boy, 
to round out the field. He is obviously the class of the field. He is a multiple grade one winner. He had a really cool 2018 when he won the Belmont Derby at a mile and a quarter. And then he came right back and won the Travers at a mile and a quarter on the dirt after winning a mile and a quarter grade one on the grass back to back grade ones. He was good really always. He only ran like a one or two poor races when they were kind of trying to get him into the derby and, and taking a shot on the dirt a couple times. He was good on the grass early on and he was, you know, a real good close fourth in the in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf in just his career uh, third career start. I think he should be okay in here because it's just a mile and a 16th. So, I don't it's not like you having to come off the bench and go a mile and an eighth or a mile and a quarter. You're you're going a mile and a sixteenth, which is a very, which is a distance that he's been plenty capable at, and I think he should be able to sit close. But the question is, you know, what the what running style will we see from him? Because he was really good when he was right on the lead, and and maybe that'll be the the plan of attack again. Maybe from the outside post, you end up letting real story go. And sit right behind him or you just send hard and try to get in front of him and just say, hey, you know what? I have the best horse. Uh, I think even off the bench, we'll be able to take this race. I pick Catholic Boy fourth, two, three, eleven, twelve. I'll use Catholic Boy in some of the exotics, as, as you heard in the uh, the pick five that I gave before. But yeah, I don't want to take a really short price on him. If he gets bet and, you know, the 11 floats up to four to one, Inspector Lindley. It's a, a fun horse to maybe put a few bucks on, and then obviously the two and the three. You have to use you uh, going to use your discretion based on price in this race. Just Howard admission office. Who of them is giving you the best value? Two, three, eleven, twelve. Try box in the twelfth. So we'll use those four. Maybe we can get them uh, with uh, with Catholic Boy, and then even if Catholic Boy wins and freaks, maybe we can get a couple uh, a price or two underneath to spice that try up. Again, I'm not always a box fan, but like I play the exact the box earlier because I'm just going two horses who I think have a pretty equal chance of winning, and I'm not too worried about doubling up in there. And and then with the try boxes, I like to do that when I have multiple prices. I don't I won't try to box a try if it's going to be like A, B, C, and D with the betting choices. Your first, second, third with the first, second, third you know favorites, but. If you have multiple prices, that's when I think it's okay, it's a, a little bit more okay to, to play that try box. It makes a little more sense, at least to me. Okay, let's get to the big one. And isn't it funny that over the last two weeks, a lot of the discussion from the Kentucky Derby has been the disqualification, maximum dis- maximum security disqualified. And the horse that he interfered with, one of the horses that he interfered with was War of Will, and that's the first horse we'll start with when we go to the the Preakness race number 13 at Pimlico. So if you're just handicapping this race and you're taking all of the what happened in the Derby out of it and you're just watching, watch the replay and just focus on War of Will. Because as you've heard all throughout the handicapping, I'm I'm someone who I can't... Play races unless I've watched the replays because I don't feel like I know a horse, right? I always get upset with people and whatever works for you when you're gambling. Like if you're on TV as an analyst, how do you say that you haven't watched a race? Like how do you know you go on and you're telling other people about horses or you're telling them who to bet? But how do you say I, I haven't watched that race or I'm not sure I didn't see or you you say something that didn't happen in a race? Because sometimes the comment lines are not what happens. That's why I watch the races because I see a lot of times where something is said and that didn't happen. Whatever the reason, the chart caller or whoever made the comments was looking at a different horse or they thought something happened that maybe I felt a little differently on. I like looking at it myself and making my own decision. And then I feel like once I've watched a horse, at least one, two, three of their races, if they're relevant to whatever the the current race of the day that they're in is, then, then I know them, but I, I don't know a horse unless I've watched their races. And I don't know unless you've watched a horse in the morning train or you've watched them run. It's like, how do you Talk about a game that you haven't watched, right? How do you talk about a basketball game just looking at a box score? That's hard. Or a baseball game or a football game. Like a baseball game in particular, you watch a game and there are innings where, you know, you see a team, they get the bases loaded or there maybe there's a big pitch that 
should have been a ball or a strike that goes one way or the other, and that just changes the momentum. Same thing happens in all sports, and you know that happens a lot, a lot of time in in the middle of a race. So I try to do my best to just watch. For me, that's that's one of the pieces of advice I'll always give you. Does it take a long time to watch races? Yeah, unfortunately, right? Is it time consuming? Sure, but that's where you find things that everyone else isn't going to find because they're just looking maybe at the comment lines or the running lines and everyone didn't spend the time watching 300 replays and staying up till 5 in the morning. That's where you get the little bit of advantage, you know? Now, that's what I, at least on the race, that's what I'll always try to to give you at least because I feel like if I'm telling you who to play and I'm giving you, you know, my thoughts or my you know, advice on play this way, the least I can do is spend the time to watch all the races for you. So if I'm just playing War of Will, the way that I play horses off of, did they have a, what was their trip like last time? What are their races and their pattern like coming into it, right? The Louisiana Derby, we we can put a line through that because that was a day where he took a goofy step early. He had a little bit of a physical issue. He came back after that and he, we saw he put up a good performance in the Kentucky Derby. Okay, here's what what I saw. He breaks well. And he's close up. And he looks like he's out of trouble early from the rail, right? Everyone's to the rail. You're going to get in trouble. He breaks well. He, he's able to get into a nice spot. He's like, wow, he's not in trouble from the rail. Wow. He's sixth. He's like three, four lengths off. He's saving ground. He's able to, to move up. He could tell he's traveling well. He's able to move up to just like two lengths off. He wanted to go. He did. He was, that, that happens a lot of the times. Horses want to go, but he's behind maximum security. And you could tell he's behind. He's tucked in nicely. He's just traveling like a horse who is, is eager to go and a horse who's ready to, to put forth a nice run. So he's, Waiting. He there's nowhere to go. He's waiting. He gets a seam. He angles out into the seam, but he gets cut off by maximum security. He comes on again after getting cut off. The cut when he gets cut off, it's a chain reaction. He bumps into a couple others. He bumps into Long Range Toddy, Bodie Express, even a couple behind them get impeded. War of Will then comes on again. He's right on terms with the leaders, maximum security and others before tiring, and he's only beaten four and a half lengths. When you get into trouble like that, you can finish dead last and I will play you back. I don't care how you finish after you are you are in a race where you have trouble like that. But to maintain your balance and then come on again, that is extremely impressive. I have a tough time playing any exotics that don't have War of Will in it. The way I look at the race, though, from just a pure betting the race to win standpoint, I want four to one on him. I think he's going to be more like five to two. I would prefer the four to one, obviously. I have him in my top four. I have him placed fourth only because of that. But this is an instance where, again, these four horses I'll be using in most of the exotics and I think he's very, very live. And if you're talking likely winners, I would say that he is probably the, or maybe improbably, he's one of the the more likely winners with improbable. I'd say him and improbable. We'll get to improbable in just a minute. So War of Will (laughs) is a name that people will know for a while now. Just from from a rooting standpoint, wouldn't it be really fun if he wins? Because then people can can go to the point of, well, you never know. Maybe he would have won the Derby. Look, he came right back and won the Preakness if he doesn't get shut off. And that maybe takes a little out of him because I don't don't like the whole, well, he had, he got, he had an opportunity. He got back up on terms and then he faded. So you're telling me that getting cut off takes nothing out of you. So if we're racing and you cut me off and I have to take a couple bad steps, stop my momentum and then come on again, that, that that doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter because I came on again and I had a chance. I don't buy that. Something happened when we knocked. You took me off my stride. The two, Bourbon War. It could be a little, uh, right to the inside, huh? It could be a little, whoa, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again now. War of will, Bourbon War, Warriors Charge, all to the inside, right? Huh? Huh? Come on, folks, it's late when I'm recording this. Just give me a laugh. Uh, give me a laugh, at least. War of will, 
the the one we move on to Bourbon War, who I will make my top selection, and I will bet him to win if he's half his price or over. He doesn't look like a twelve to one shot to me. He was under three to one in the Florida Derby, that same race that included maximum security, Bodie Express, and Code of Honor. He was fourth, but it was a race that did not set up well for him. Maximum security got the lead. He was able to cruise on the front end. Nobody pushed him. That was a race where Hidden Scroll didn't push him. Uh, That was a race where Hidden Scroll didn't go and didn't become a part of that Florida Derby pace like was expected and like most of us envisioned on paper. And that enabled maximum security to get the lead and just cruise on the front end under pretty slow fractions at an already speed favoring track like Gulfstream Park. So I think getting away from Gulfstream Park will really help Bourbon War. He just missed getting into the Derby. The difference between getting into the Derby and not was him finishing third instead of fourth when he was third behind Code of Honor, who he was just not even a length behind, just three quarters of a length behind. So that was probably a little frustrating for the connections to just miss the Derby like that. And to see the horses that you were behind in the Derby come back and run so well, and you, you know, you never know what what happens in the Derby. Maybe he's able to get a nice trip, get a setup, and come closing. I would have been more likely to play Bourbon War than, than a lot of other horses in there. So he settles towards the back, last out in the Florida Derby. He's third from the back. He starts to make what looks like a big move, but he he just doesn't have anything to run into, right? He's going wide, he's making a big move, but it just, it gets really nowhere. It just, he quickly flattens out. He passes some horses that he's just a little bit better than, but he's not able to get by Code of Honor, and that is why he didn't get into the Derby. And then look at how well those two horses came back and ran in the Derby. DQ or not, maximum security was awesome. Code of Honor was very good. Coming back and being put up to second. And this race on paper, right, we talk about the setup. War of Will from the rail. He won't be far. Whether or not he sends or whether or not he's asked for speed to settle into a nice spot. He's going to be, I think, in the mix and, and part of at least the early pace. Warrior's Charge is going to go. Improbable won't be far. I've already said he's better when he's a little bit closer. And he it doesn't have to be a little farther back. He wasn't really way out of it, but maybe just a little farther back because he was a, he's a little flat. I actually liked his race better than most. We'll get to him in a second. Other speed from Market King. You know he's going to go. Always Mining is probably going to go. Another twist of fate. He won't be exactly far out of it. So again, there's there's versions of this race where War of Will, Warrior's Charge, Improbable, Market King, Always Mining, you know, Bodhi Express, maybe he's not too far out of it. And another twist of fate, and they're all right up in the mix. And if that happens, a horse like Bourbon War will really benefit. And I'll make him my top pick, adding the blinkers, hoping now with the blinkers, he's just a little closer. He doesn't have to be right on the lead. Just instead of being second to last, just be mid-pack in this field, sixth or seventh. You know, you don't have to be na- So just so you don't have to pass every horse, just be a couple lengths closer. And able to start your run a little bit earlier. Warriors charge. Respect the speed. But it just to me looks like this is a race that has too much other early speed in here. You do like to see Javier jumping aboard for Brad Cox. One of the two Brad Cox horses in here. Who actually complement each other pretty well. right? We'll skip Improbable for a second. We'll come right back. We'll, we'll talk Brad Cox. as He's on the, he's the trainer of the five Owendale also. Owendale made a huge wide move up to the lead and just kept on going when he defeated another twist of fate in the Lexington. It's a good, good race. And a move like that, that was like a derby type move that you see horse making a big one on the outside and he sustained it and he went on and he beat a nice horse. Can he come right back and produce that type of effort? Because it's going to be that type of effort that he needs to win this. But he, that, I'm expecting them to choose those tactics again. Take back and make the late run because the stable mate Warriors Charge will be on the lead. Much, much more likely a horse to be on the lead. So they, they complement each other well as far as their running style is concerned. Hey, let's go to Improbable. Improbable was your your Kentucky Derby favorite. He ended up at four to one. And 
I heard a lot of negatives about Improbable after the race, and I, I wasn't really keyed in on his trip during the race, and so I, I saw people talking about it after, and I went back and watched, and I kind of disagree to those who thought he didn't run well. He he broke in a bit, but he was able to work out a pretty nice spot, right? He was just off the rail. He was in sixth, fifth. He was never more than five lengths back. He waited nicely behind horses, but he, and he was full of run, but he was behind horses. That's the thing. In the derby, you want to be able to gradually not want to, you kind of have to, if you're coming from the back to be able to gradually pick out your spots. It's so hard to just make a big swooping run. You have to hopefully just improve, 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 improve your position a little bit. And improbable was not, was not able to do that. He had to wait and he lost ground. He lost momentum. He got shuffled back a little bit at the top of the lane. That's when he got a great opening. That's when he had every opportunity, but I think he was probably a little farther back than he wanted to be at that point. He may have been a length or two closer if he wasn't shuffled back, and then maybe he has a better chance. I don't know about winning, but maybe he finishes a little bit closer. So I just didn't think he ran that poorly. He, you know, he got an opening to angle out in the clear. He was just a little bit flat, but he was not bad. He wanted to move earlier. He was still trying late. He just wasn't in that top gear. Some of the other horses who were still closing and might be a little better going longer, but he's not going longer than, than he went last time out. And we, I don't know if we see him back in the Belmont or not, but I you know as far as th- this distance, I think he should be okay. And, and then maybe we'll see if he cuts back or we'll see where they end up going with him. But he's very logical in here. Very, very logical. And I'm not against him at all. I have two, four, 11, one in that order. Those will be the four that I use in, in all the exotics. So, so just hit on Owen Dale. Let's get to Market King. I like the Market King in the Path Day Mile. But he was scratched out of that race. And the reason why I liked him in the Pat Day Mile is the reason why I won't play him here is because it was cutting back to a mile. I think this is just too far for him. He has some speed, so I think he will be pushing the pace early on. He'll be you know, forwardly placed, but others in here will be. And he's a horse who's just seemed like he stopped around the mile point in his last couple of races. He's actually ran really well up until the mile point. You know, he was third behind Omaha Beach and game winner in the Rebel. And then in the bluegrass, he, he was in the mix until late. And then he started backing up as it was just a little too far for him going a mile and an eighth. And I think this is going to be a little harder for him trying to go even farther. I don't doubt his ability and I like him cutting back, but Lucas always has a horse like this in the, uh, in the derby that could, could really jump up. And, uh, I mean, this would be, to me, this would be one of the bigger, kind of head scratchers in the race i guess n- not as much because he at least has speed right he's not a, he's not a horse who's just gonna become from way out of it and he's run well against good horses but i just think it's too far for market king from just a pure handicapping this race standpoint there are i think two horses in particular and and, and maybe owendale so i guess three horses that i don't know what to do with them and so i probably won't play them a whole lot Unless I play some sort of a ticket with just Bourbon War on top of a bunch of others, as maybe, you know, we'll see, but that's not one of my major plays in here. Always Mining has been excellent, right? He's going for his seventh victory in a row. He beat Win 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 last year, but, you know, how good is Win Win Win? Not quite sure. Not a horse that I'll be including in here. And he's he's never really been tested either. So you don't know how much more a horse like this has under the tank if if he gets looked at in, in a fight. He might have a, another gear or two that we don't even know about. If he's 8 or 10 to 1, I'd never talk you off him. Just don't don't like him as much as I like others. I'm going to make him prove it in in the toughest race of his career against legitimate other speed. That's the thing. I, with his running style, he was able to, to drop back a little bit and pass horses that he's much better than, but... He's not quite as fast as the the, ma- the the fastest in here. And he doesn't have a late kick or he doesn't want to come from the back of the pack like some of the better closers in here. So he might be caught in between. And if he's good enough to work out a trip and win this race, then, then he's going to beat me. Signalman, you know, I liked coming into the year, in particular going in, thinking about a horse to play as like a long shot in the derby because I liked his success at Churchill Downs. But he has not really stepped forward at all at three, from two to three. 
He did not really run well in the Fountain of Youth. I thought he was just okay in the Bluegrass, and I don't think that race is particularly strong so far from what we've seen. So just a, more against Signalman. And Bodie Express, you know, he did have legit trouble, and it's hard to, to know where he would have finished or what would have happened to Bodie Express, but all that being said, he's still a maiden. I, I'm, he's going to have to prove it to me on this stage. If he's able to break his maiden in the Preakness, we haven't seen that, I think, since the uh, the 1800s when it was just racing was obviously much different at that point. And then Everfast looks like a big, big long shot. I just can't really make a legitimate case for Everfast. The connections just kind of said they thought the race was wide open and maybe you can uh, you can pick up a piece late and, uh, and, and then you're a horse who hit the board in the Preakness. And that, that's obviously good for you for you know breeding purposes and and moving forward. The price play in the in the race to me because I do think like I do think War of Will improbable will get bet and I I'm expecting Bourbon War to be cut in half around six to one. So if that's the case, we might be dealing with a, three of the top betting choices, and that's why we want Laughing Fox. If you're looking for a bust out long shot, if you're looking for a horse that could maybe complete the end of some of your pick fives at a nice price, or bet a few bucks to win at, or maybe just a horse to use in your exactos tries and your supers. Laughing Fox was fourth in the Rebel on April the, the 13th. And if you look at his career, he's he's been pretty good. He had some trouble in his career debut. I think you can make an excuse for that one. He d- did not run poorly when he came back and he ran at Churchill at the end of 2018. And then he puts together a couple wins to start 2019 over at Oaklawn Park. They jump him up into the Rebel. He's behind game uh, Omaha winner, Game Beach, and Market King. He actually... He was dead last in the Arkansas Derby or in in the Rebel, excuse me. He was, you know, very, very slow and he just had really no shot after being pinched. But then he's dead last again in the Arkansas Derby. He's chasing, he moves in between, and he was only a length behind Country House, who was third in that race. And we saw Country House come back to run well in the Derby. Whether you like or not, the fact that he was put up to win, Country House did run well. So Laughing Fox was behind Omaha Beach. And game winner, and then he's behind Omaha Beach, Improbable, and Country House in a race where he spotted them. In the Arkansas Derby, you know, he's chasing Omaha Beach, Improbable, and Country House, who are all a few lengths in front and able to get the jump. I think in a race like this with additional distance for Laughing Fox, where he's gone a mile and an eighth his last couple of starts, and he's going a mile and in, uh, in 316s here, it should help him. He was, you know, just. Really, really wide. Also, he's wide into the turn in between horses, three deep. He was widest of all down the middle of the racetrack. Pretty, pretty good effort. And I think the long shot to play in here. The other, what do you do with him, horse? Another twist of fate. He's really done little wrong. He, you know, he, he proved that he's fine on the dirt. He just doesn't want to sprint. So, you know, excuse him for his debut. He. He sat third, but he was behind, and he was kind of in between horses. He had to wait and shift around a little bit. It wasn't a bad effort, but he w- he was behind Owendale, who freaked. He's another who I probably would have included in some way, shape, or form in the Derby, but I just don't like him as much as I like a couple of the others in here. Another twist of fate is right in that same tier with Always Mining, who just I don't really, and and Owendale really the three of them. I don't know what to do. I wouldn't. Throw them out. I, I wouldn't tell you not to play them, but I'm probably not going to have them in many of my exotics because I will be playing a 1, 2, 4, 11 try box here. And Bourbon War at 8 to 1, you know, would be great. I wouldn't want to take less than 6 from a win wager. And Laughing Fox, you know, if you're looking for the long shot, if he's 20 to 1 or over, that's a very fair price on him as a horse who's stepping up and I thought ran pretty well last time out. Whew. Okay. Let's roll through the, the wagers for you one more time before we say good night. Okay, some of the wagers I will play. Let's get to the fifth race. We're going to go in the fifth race, a win wager on the number seven. If we can get 10 to one or so, and we'll play a try one, seven with one, three, four, five, seven. That's race number five. We're looking for uh, the seven horse at around 10 to one or so I just like to make sure we say the name so I don't mess up any of the numbers when we're doing that. That's Thomas Shelby. Okay. Sixth race, we'll play the one New York Central to win and anything around seven to two. We'll play the pick four as they start in the sixth race. So you can go one, six, seven, 
with five, with all, with four, six. You don't want a single to five. I might play that ticket a few times and then I'll play this ticket where I don't single the five maybe once as like a backup. One, six, seven, two, three, five, six, seven with all with four, six. Now let's move to race number nine. That's the next wager. And the ninth race will start the pick five. I'd also recommend as long as the the two horses that we're playing here don't get bet down and they're not the two betting choices, let's hook them up in an exact the box four and six there with Super Echo and with Joe Joe Air. So those will be the two horses, the four and the six that we begin with in the pick five that starts in race number nine. So this is the pick five that goes race nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and it ends in the Preakness. So in this race, we'll use the four and the six, Super Echo, six, JoJo Air. The five horse, or excuse me, four, six, in the ninth, 10th race, one, three, seven in race number 10. We'll be using I'm So Fancy, The Way I Am, and In the Lee. Those are the three. Flexibility, inflexibility, depends on what you want to do with. I'm fine with just with just using those three, one, three, seven. In the 11th race, the Chick Lang, two, eight, seven. Like still dreaming there. I think anything around like eight to one or so is fair, especially if this horse floats up a little bit. And I think he might, because I think horses like like Malpais with big figures, but in particular, I think Pyron and Preamble likely gets bet down in here. So two eight seven, those are you know logical. Pyron and Preamble and the two still dreaming will hook the three of them up. Two seven eight. So that's the third leg of the pick five. Two three eleven twelve in the twelfth. And then to close things out, one, two, four, eleven. One more time on that pick five, starting in the ninth. Four, six, one, three, seven, with two, seven, eight, with two, three, eleven, twelve, with one, two, four, eleven. In the tenth race, would recommend playing a trifecta of some sorts with the three and seven on top. You know, as many horses as you can underneath, but maybe the three, seven on top of all even because if either one of them can can, uh, can win the race and, and pay double digits as long as they're fair prices. Put them on top of as many of the rest of the field as you can in the underneath spots. Twelfth race. Let's go to a tri box two three eleven twelve. We'll use Just Howard Admission Office Inspector Lindley and Catholic Boy, and then to close things out in the Preakness two four eleven one. We'll box those four. So one two four eleven tri box Bourbon War at you know, six to eight to one or so. Six to one is the line we'll take on Bourbon War. Best of luck, Preakness Saturday. If you're listening to this before the Friday races and you, you're still interested in playing, make sure to go download the Friday Primlico also. And and hey, I'm, I'm going to do a lot of horse racing. I'll do a lot of gambling um, segments also. But if you haven't listened to some of the other shows where we're talking major sports, give them a look. Uh, sharing opinions always games that I've always watched. I, I analyze the games like I try to, I try to do like I analyze a, a horse race. So as I'm watching, kind of taking notes throughout, seeing where things changed, what happened, what changed the game, maybe who to play back next time out. Cause I'm always looking at it from an analytical standpoint as a, as a better really. And so go check some of those out. If you're interested in game of Thrones, obviously there's a game of Thrones recap in there. I gave my thoughts on Frank Vogel hire for the Lakers. You'll hear lots of Lakers talk. You'll hear lots of Dodgers talk. Once the, the playoffs and baseball and big games start, we'll do some instant recaps and instant analysis for big games there. And once the NBA stops, Shortly, we will be bringing on guests. I know I've been saying that for a few weeks now, but um, I want to make sure I have everything set up. I've been doing some practice um, podcasts with you know, phone calls and stuff. I want to make sure from a technical standpoint, I'm not great. So I want to have everything ready to rock. So when I actually have people on, I'm not messing up their audio and wasting their time and then you know, spending an hour talking to someone and recording something and then it, it not even being able to use so be used. So Thanks for spending all this time with me this week. Lots of Gino. I hope uh, hope I was able to steer you in the right direction. And as always, if you can, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, leave me a nice five star rating and review. Best of luck, Joey. Close us out, my friend. <laughs>